Hello there and thanks for connecting. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to News Trail this Thursday, 29th October 2020. I am Aditola Kayode. President Muhammadu Buhari has asked Nigerians to desist from making divisive statements that threaten national unity and security. Mr. President reinforced this at the virtual Federal Executive Council meeting, where he launched a 10 million naira appeal fund for the 2021 Armed Forces Remembrance Day. He commended the resilience of Nigerian soldiers who have remained devoted and dedicated to their duties of maintaining the external and sometimes internal security of the nation despite varying challenges. He also promised timely releases of resources for operations and welfare of the armed forces. The ceremony, which featured the emblem decoration, had in attendance the Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, the leadership of the National Assembly, other cabinet members, and the Dean of Diplomatic Corps. Meanwhile, President Buhari also administered the oath of office of the Chairman and members of the National Population Commission. As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to celebrate Eid Malut, the birth of the Prophet Muhammad, President Buhari has asked the people to emulate and reflect on the virtues of the Holy Prophet. He said by showing and exhibiting understanding, patience, honesty, and generosity to one another, peaceful communal living will help in the development of the nation. The president, however, advised that everyone should stick to the COVID-19 precautions as Nigeria cannot afford the second wave of the pandemic. The federal government had declared Thursday, 29th October as public holiday. Despite the overwhelming support and near announcement of Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwiala as the next Director General of the World Trade Organization, the United States of America is trying to block the chances of what could be the first African head of the organization, saying it will continue to support the candidature of South Korean Minister Yu. Of the 27 delegations, only one is said not to be in support of Nigeria's former finance minister, and that's the United States. There's been no official reason for this except for quotes saying the WTO needs a major reform and that Ms. Yu has distinguished herself as a trade expert with the necessary skills. WTO spokesperson Keith Rockwell says though overwhelmingly unanimous, the Wednesday deliberations was never meant to be the final. 66-year-old Ngozi Okonjo Iwiala, who has a 25-year-old career at the World Bank as a development economist, sits atop the board of notable international National organizations enjoys the majority support for the position. If she eventually gets to head the WTO, she'll be the first female and the first African to do so. Over 75 Americans have already voted with just a few days to the elections. That's more than half of all the votes cast in 2016. The total vote count in 2016 was 138.8 million. More than 49 million of the votes are millions, while others voted in person at polling stations across the country. Early voting is one of the several options in the U.S. voting system. Meanwhile, both candidates, President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden, are still running their last-minute campaigns to key battleground states, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Michigan, Georgia, Florida, and Arizona. And that's it for today. Many thanks for connecting. Please do not forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Aditola Coyote. Enjoy greater good by doing good. Have a fantastic day ahead.